All right, hey, welcome back, everybody. Once again, it's your girl, Jasmine. So uh, we're going to be talking about restoration and rebuilding. So we're going to be in Genesis chapter 6, uh, verse 8. And it says, um, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man a per and perfect in his generation. And Noah walked with God. And Noah begot three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Now we're going to stop right there, but basically when you're thinking about restoration and rebuilding, a lot of the times when you are rebuilding something or restoring something, sometimes you have to go back and start from scratch. That means you have to destroy uh, what you have uh, created um, to uh, so that that you know, what you created is now on a solid foundation, um, that is on a firm foundation, uh, that the foundation is a godly foundation. See, God may have to destroy something sometimes in life, uh, because, uh, the foundation in which it was built on was not built on God. And so God, uh, you know, it says right here, it says, uh, the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt. It was corrupt. So God had, you know, anything that's corrupted, uh, you know, it, it's not right. And so sometimes you have to go in and you have to lay down a new foundation. You have to fix, you know, the issues in which it is that are, that, um, need to be fixed because if not, corruption is not is not something that is right um and so god decided that he was going to destroy the earth um and so i you know you think about you know the children of israel uh when they didn't make it into the promised land uh they had disbelief and so what god did was he had them walk through the wilderness and the only people who made it out of the wilderness was those who believed and the children of those who disbelieve uh, in the wilderness uh believed and they got into the promised land see god had to destroy all the disbelief so that belief could make it into the promised land see sometimes god has to lay uh destroy that uh unshake un shaky foundation that shaky down foundation of disbelief so that when belief comes in that will you know in, in what it is that christ you know how how to live a god fearing life you know whether you have a godly uh fearing relationship whether you you know as for me and my house we will serve the lord you know whatever it is in your life that's not uh, built on you know god's foundation you know god sometimes has to go in and destroy it so that he can rebuild so that what he created is built back upon him because you know this world was created by him and he um you know you know he is the creator and the creator has a certain way of which he wants things uh, to function and so we're going to talk more about that but i'm going to put up the first few questions and we're going to carry on are you guys peace define corruption what situation in your life was built on a shaky foundation but god wants to rebuild it has god had to destroy that thing in your life All right, you guys, so when you're looking in um, Genesis uh, chapter 6, verse 14, it says, Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Uh, room shall thou make in an ark, and shalt pitch it within and without pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make it of. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, and the breadth of it, 50 cubits, in the height of it, 30 cubits. A window shall thou make to the ark, and a cubit shall thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof. With lower, second, and third stories shalt thou make it. And behold, I, even I, do bring a flood of water upon the earth to destroy all flesh, wherein is the breath of life from under heaven and everything that is in earth shall 
die. Now, we just talked about how God was the creator. God is the creator. And any creator, when they create something, they are the ones who understand how uh, the creation should be made. If you ask the person who created the fork, what are you supposed to do with the fork? They're going to tell you you're supposed to eat with it. You're supposed to, you know stab your chicken with it or whatever you're eating with it and use it to scoop up your food. You use it to eat your food. You know, you ask the person, uh, what do you use the AC for? Why did you create the AC? To go in the window uh, so that, you know, you can cool down your house or ruin your house or uh, some part of your house, you know. When you ask anybody what they created, uh, you know, they'll, they have a purpose in which they created what, uh, you know, they have, they have created. Uh, they have a plan. They have instructions. So kind of like when we are rebuilding, when God is rebuilding, he has instructions in what it is that he wants and how he wants it to be uh, rebuilt. He has a plan. You know, the Bible says in Jeremiah, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And so, so, you know, God has plans. And so right here we see that God had a plan for Noah. You know, maybe you're in the season of your life where, you know, God has a plan for you. He's been speaking to you. He's been trying to tell you what it is that he wants um, you to do in instruction. I'm going to tell you the story the other day. Uh, the other day I felt defeated. I felt like, you know, I felt like this world just kept kicking me in the face, you know, like there was corruption all around me and I could not win the battle in which it was I was fighting. I was feeling defeated because I've been fighting the battle for so long it was getting old. Uh, it's like wrestling with God and, you know, um, after a while, it, you know, um, Israel said, you know, I'm not going to stop until you bless me, you know. There's a point where you get tired of, of fighting the battle when you get tired and so I was like Lord you know something has got to give Lord uh, to a point where I actually ended and landed myself into the hospital something has got to give I need to hear from you I need you to speak to me I need instructions I need change and suddenly like I was speaking the other day in one of my lessons suddenly things have changed in my life but God uh, will come to you in a, a, a still small voice you you just have to listen to what it is is that God is trying to tell you. Uh, maybe you might have to fast. Maybe you might have to pray. Uh, whatever it is that you have to do, but you have to make sure that you are listening listening to what God is trying to tell you. Uh, maybe you could be like uh, Samuel when he when he was being called from God. Speak, Lord, your servant hears. You know, Noah humbled himself down. He listened to the instruction which God told him to do. He had never seen the rain before. He had never been through the circumstance before, but God was telling him to do something, so he was to do it. Maybe you've never been through that circumstance before, but this is the time and the place in your life where God is telling you, uh, you need to do what it is that I am telling you to do. Uh, there is no, you know, he told him, I'm going to destroy the earth, you know, build your ark and what it is that God is trying to tell you to build at this time and this moment. There is no time to wait. Get the instruction what it is that God wants you to do uh, and do the instructions of what it is that God has for you. Um, because, you know, you know, we don't want you know, the rain to come and then the ark is not built. You want to make sure that you are on the ark. You want to make sure all the instructions, which it is that God has uh, told you to do when it comes to rebuilding and what it is that God wants to rebuild in your life. You want to make sure that you're doing what it is that God has told you to do. So I'm going to put up the next few questions I'm going to carry on. Are you guys? Peace. Are there instructions God has given you to build so that he can restore? Have you started to take action in faith to do what it is that God has called you to do? Okay, so, like, when you look in Numbers chapter 14, you know, uh, when you think about the children of Israel, see, Caleb believed in what it was that God was trying to show him. You know, I use uh, uh, Numbers 13.30 all the time, uh, where it says, um, and Caleb still the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are well able to overcome it. Uh, see, the only people who were not able to uh, enter into the promised land were those who disbelieved. You know, the day will come where the bridegroom is coming, you know, and then you think about the parable of the wise versions, the unwise versions. Well, you know, if you did not have your oil when the bridegroom came, well, you will be left behind. Uh, you will not be able to enter in the kingdom of heaven. If you had disbelief, you know, you will die off in the wilderness. If you did not follow the instructions with 
in which God has been showing you. See, the thing that Caleb had was that he understood that he could overcome what it was that God was trying to show him. See, in um, verse uh, uh, t- uh, 24 of chapter 14, it says, But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him, hath followed me fully. See, what we need to be doing is following God's instructions fully. See, Caleb followed God fully. And because of that, the scripture continue on it says him will i bring into the land where into he went and his seed shall possess it uh, because that because he listened to what it was that god was trying to tell him uh his seed was able to uh possess what it was that god was trying to show him um what god was trying to show him and so when they went to go cross over into the promised land god you know he was able to cross over to the promised land. See, the Bible says in Joshua, when we look in Joshua, then Joshua, in, in Joshua chapter 1, verse 10, then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, pass through the host and command the people, saying, prepare your victuals. For within three days ye shall pass over this Jordan to go into possess the land which the Lord hath giveth you to possess. See, they had God. They were trusting in God to get them through this. Their foundation in which it was, they were going to uh, build this promised land um, up on God. You know, everything that was not of God, you know, God was going to win all the battles, destroy everything, you know, to a point where Joshua said, you know, uh, you know, if you want to go back to serving the the gods and, you know, in, in, in Egypt, you know, go ahead, be my guest. You know, if you want to go, uh, you know, serve with other people, you know, be my guest. But for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. There was no other way, you know, for him. He said, I, you know, um, he said right here in verse 14 of chapter 24, Now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in uh, sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods of which your fathers discerned on this earth, other side of the flood in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seems evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of which your fathers have served, or that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. See, God had a plan, God had a purpose, and they followed the instructions of what it was, and they were defeating and winning the battles because uh, they were building their foundation. Their foundation was God. They were, you know, they had belief. They were able to enter into the promised land because they had belief. Is your foundation a foundation of belief, or is your foundation uh, unbelief? Is it belief in Jesus Christ? Is it belief in, uh, you know, God? Not, not just God, because the Bible says that, uh, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that no man shall come to the Father except by him. That means your belief needs to be in Jesus Christ, because there's no way into heaven except by Jesus Christ. Christ. So we need to be listening to the instruction what what it is that God has for us because we cannot defeat the battles if we do not listen to God's instructions. Now, when they were to enter into the promised land, uh, God had told them that, you know, when they get into the land, when they when they go, you know, into um when they go into land that they were to destroy um everything in Jericho. Everything in Jericho. So when they got to the battle of uh I basically what happened was that someone took something that they were not supposed to bring uh, from defeating Jericho. And so they would not be defeat the battle because they were carrying over something that they were not supposed to carry over. If God gives you the instructions to do something, you are not to do the opposite of what it is to tell you because you will not win the battle. So you have to go with the instruction of what it is that God wants to tell you. So that means uh, if you have to fast fast if you have to pray pray if you have to be in your bible constantly be in your bible constantly if you have to listen to sermon after sermon after sermon do whatever it is that you have to do if you have to sit there in silence to listen to god in a still small voice then do what it is that you have to do uh and so i'm gonna put up the next few questions and then we're gonna carry on are you guys are you following jesus fully to help you get to the place which he has shown you is there anything you are still holding on to that will hinder you from winning the battle? All right, you guys. So um, when it comes to instructions of what it is that God 
um, is trying to do in our life. Sometimes the instructions seem very strange and weird and the things in which he asks us to do. I mean, he asks Noah to build an ark. Um, we're going to be uh, reading out of Second Kings, and then I'm going to have you guys turn to Acts chapter 9. Um, so it says in Second Kings, verse 16 of chapter 3, and he said, Thus saith the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. So he told him to make a valley full of ditches. I mean, he was to dig these ditches in the valley. For thus saith the Lord, ye shall see not see the wind, neither shall you see the rain, yet the valley shall be filled with water. And ye may drink, both ye and the cattle for your beasts. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand and ye shall smite every fence city and every choice city and shall uh fell every good tree and stop all wells of water and mar every good piece of land with stone and it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered that behold there what came water by the way of edom in the country was filled with water so you know, sometimes we don't understand how God is going to do something um, in the way in which he is that he tells us that he's going to do it. You know, it's not always going to happen the way that we expect it to happen. We just have to be prepared uh, to trust in God and what it is that he said for us to do. Uh, he's going to, uh, you know, fight the battle and win the battle um, and, er you know, all everything that we're going to go up against is going to be defeated if we follow the instructions. Um, when the children of Israel went into the promised land, because they did not listen to God's instructions uh, on, you know, in the battle of Jericho by leaving things behind, um, you know, and, and destroying everything, they lost the next battle in the promised land because they did not do the things right. So you want to make sure that you do things right or else you will um and not you know you you will have to fight the battle all over again and we want to make sure that we um win this battle you know uh you know when you think about peter when he walked on on water you know when god told him to step out on faith um you know come uh you know in the middle of the water uh he had fear he doubted somewhere on his um you know on his walk and we want to make sure that we are not fearing anything you know that we know that we are walking with god and then we're trusting what it is that he's saying that he's walking with us and so um you know the other day i was talking about um saul uh in chapter nine when he gets converted but someone um who you know a lot of people never really look at is ananias um and so we're gonna look at ananias in uh uh chapter 9 of Acts in verse 10, and it says, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. So again, we see that the Lord came to him in a vision, and he answered him and said, I am here. So you must know that if God calls you and God, uh, you know, has something in a plan for your life and what you want to do, you have to answer him. I am here, Lord. You know, speak, Lord, your servant is hears you, you know, and God came to him in a vision. He had a vision in which he wanted him to, you know, God doesn't come to you empty handed. He comes to you with a vision. And it says in verse 11, and the Lord said unto him, arise and go unto a street, which is called straight. And inquire in the house of Judas for the one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And he hath seen a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and putting uh, his hand on him that he might receive his sight. So he got instructions. It says, arise and go to the street in which he called straight and so back in those days everybody knew that Saul of Tarshish was a um you know a man who uh you know killed Christians and so here he is he is going without fear because he knows uh, that God is walking with him he's not worried about the outcome you know he knows no matter what if God told me to go I need to go no ifs ands or buts no no worries about it because God told me to go if God told me this is what but he has for me. I need to do it in my life uh, because, you know, God has something for me there. 
You know, there's something for me there to do. And I'm just going to trust in God's word, you know, uh, no matter what it is. Um, you know, when we later on see how Saul, you know, he was, uh, converted, um, he was converted, and I have the scripture, um, and, you know, he went into a certain city in Athens, and, um, when he was in the city of Athens, you know, uh, they had kicked him, um, they, you know, they were, like, dissing him because of the things in which God, um, was saying, you know, and he was just like, you know, I have the gospel, I don't need this, so he went to a guy named Justice's house, and God appeared to him, you know, in Acts 18, and God had told him, for I am with you, and no one will attack you or hurt you, for I have many people in the city, and basically, you know, preaching the gospel there for a year later, because, you know, a year more, um, after, you know, that situation happen, but, you know, sometimes we, you know, we, we hear God's instructions, and, you know, there comes a little conflict against us, and so, you know, we, we tend to fall back, and we're like, you know, whatever, I have the gospel, I don't need to do this, you know, whatever, who cares, uh, but we need to realize and understand that, you know, God has a plan, and which it is that he wants, and so he affirmed to uh, Paul, that, you know, I'm here for you, and no one will attack you, and no one will hurt you, and I have many people in the city, so, you know, if God did that for Saul, you know, after he was converted, think about what he did for Ananias when he was going towards Saul, you know, Ananias had everything to lose, okay, God, you want me to send, send me towards a man who's constantly, you know, rejecting you, persecuting Christians, killing Christians, you know, all that, and you want me to go there, um, after, you know, he's done all that stuff. Okay, God, I'm just going to trust you and what it is that you are telling me and follow you. And so it says that in verse 13, then Ananias answered and says, have you heard by many of this man how much evil he have done to thy saints at Jerusalem? And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all that uh, call on thy name. So, of course, you know, there's going to be a little, um, you know, fear sometimes, you know, and he was like, you know, confirming to God, okay, this is the same man, you know. I, am I hearing about the same man you're hearing about? Because, you know, and I know that I've done that before because there have been situations where God has told me to do something and I'm like, God, are you talking about the same person that I'm talking about? Because this person, I'm telling you, like, they are not going to listen to what I'm saying and there's no way, like, are you really telling me to do this? Oh, oh. Okay, Lord. Uh, all right, God. Hey. Uh, but it says in verse 15, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. You know, uh, uh, you know, ever since the beginning of the Bible, it was prophesied, um, in, you know, the Old Testament that, you know, there would be a, uh, you know, a man who, uh, you know, is converted, you know, on the road to Damascus, you know, it was, it was prophesied in Isaiah that this would happen this day. God already knew. So, of course, if God already knows what's going to happen, you know, he knows the final outcome. So, you don't ever have to worry about what it is that you're up against, what you're facing. If he gives you instructions to do what it is that you just need to trust in God, um, with what it is that he's showing you. So I'm going to put up the next two questions right here on our guys. Are you worried about what God is showing you? Why? Are you going to give up if there is opposition or will you keep pushing forward and trusting in God? Alright, so the next thing we have to do is we have to make sure that we are prepared for what it is that God is showing us. Um, the Bible says in Joshua uh, chapter 1 verse 10, Then Joshua uh, commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host and command the people, saying, Prepare your victuals. For within three days ye shall pass over the Jordan to go and possess the land, which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. They, victuals, if you look in a different version, if you look in the New King James Version, it says, prepare your provisions. That means, um, you know, to go prepare ahead of time for what it is that God is showing you. Obviously, if this uh, God has uh, given you the vision of what it is, instructions, you should, God should also give you uh, the materials and the means of what it is. If he hasn't, then on the way and on your journey, and then he will give you what it is. Um, they had provisions already given to them because God had already showed them that they were going to the 
promised land. So if God has already showed you where it is that you're heading in your life, he has already made the provisions for you and what it is that uh, he has for you. Uh, when I was going on my journey, the first time uh, when God told me to take up my cross and follow him and leave school, uh, there he gave me the scripture in uh, Mark chapter 6 when he had sent the disciples out and um, at that point in time in my life he had told me you know uh, stop getting your hair done stop getting um, you know your nails done and stuff like that you know and uh, so I was listening to those instructions in which he had given me and so uh, he had told me uh, he gave me the scripture in verse uh, chapter 6 of Mark verse 7 and he called unto him the twelve and began to send them forth two by two and gave them power over unclean spirits and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no scrip, no bread, no money in their purse, and be shooed with sandals and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In that place... So ever ye enter into the house, there abide till ye depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you when ye depart, then shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in that day of judgment than for that city. And they went out and they preached the men should repent and they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them so basically when he had sent the disciples out to go preach the gospel he told them to take nothing with them uh, that you know every town you know people would receive them you know it was really easy for me to take up my cross and follow christ because when i was younger i used to run away and i i, I looked back on those days where i used to run away and someone would always take me into their house and so when i stepped out on faith i realized if you know if i was acting wicked in the world like that if I was acting horrible in the world like that, but now I'm walking with God and God has told me to take up my cross and follow him, you know, I'll have a place to stay. I'll have safety. I'll have security. I'll have this, uh, you know, as long as I'm trusting in God. You know, when I left uh, to go to California, uh, all I had was I had zero dollars in my account. At the last minute, somebody put seventy dollars in my account um that you know had came from selling my stuff my grandma had put the money in my account and then god had told me okay do everything i said to you but when i left i had a suitcase a guitar my laptop and my purse uh, traveling across the country following jesus uh everything else i had sold and gave up uh you know to to follow christ you know i had gotten rid of everything else to follow christ uh, i was now just taking up my cross and and trusting in, you know, what it was that God was showing me. So whatever instruction God is trying to tell you, uh, you know, he'll, he'll tell you what it is that, you know, you need to bring along the way. He will give you provisions, you know, and what it is that needs to be brought, um, and prepared ahead of time. So you want to make sure that you are preparing ahead of time. Sometimes God will prepare and give you what it is that you need uh, to, to help you, you know, uh, along the way. You know, like I said, I was in Tennessee and I had no money and God gave me $2,500 because, you know, he's going to give you what you need if you need to get somewhere, if he needs you to get somewhere. Not just because of out of want, but if it's in his will and in his purpose, you know. Um, when the Bible talks about that. I'll put the scripture up here, you know, ask if it's in his purpose, then he's going to give it to you. Um, so uh, we're going to continue on in um, chapter uh, six of Genesis because it talks about the same thing because God told Noah to get all the animals into the ark. Of course, God was going to give Noah all the animals um, to put into the ark, you know, so those are the provisions that he had made for him, He, you know, beforehand. He said, um, but in verse 18, but with thee, I will establish my covenant and thou shalt, um, come unto the ark, thou and thou sons and the wife and thy son's wives with thee and of everything, things of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee. And they shall be male and female of the fowl after their kind and of the cattle after their kind and every creeping thing of the earth after the, his kind and two of every sort shall come unto thee to keep them alive and take thou unto thee of all the food that is eaten 
and thou shalt gather it to thee, and it shall be for food for thee and for them. Thus did Noah according to all that God commanded him, so did he. So Noah did everything that God had called him to do, uh, had called him to do, so that when the flood uh, came, he was able to be on the ark. He was able to save his family. You know, whatever it is that God is calling you to do in the season in your life, uh, you know, listen to the instructions. Uh, get the provision. God will give you the provisions and the needs and the means. You know, God had told me, bring superfluity, which means what's needed. You know, I brought what was needed on my journey in which, you know, when I was sorting through my clothes of which to get rid of, he would tell me yes or no. You know, whatever it is that God is showing you, he will give you the provisions. He will give you the instructions. Uh, you just trust in God. You know, you don't have to be ever afraid. You know, I know that stepping out in faith can be very hard. But I know that, you know, even in my life, like right now, um, you know, I, I was at a crossroad in my life. That's, of course, that's why I did the lesson, because whatever I sh uh, preach unto you guys is kind of what I'm going through in my life to help you guys, to minister to you guys. I was at a crossroad in my life. God told me that I needed to make some decisions. I decided that I wanted to choose what it was that God had for me, uh, you know. And so because of that, you know, I have to go on another step of faith and trusting him and what it is that he's showing me. And so, you know, for my life, I'm about to go on another journey and step out. So I just encourage you guys to trust in God and follow his instructions. Um, I will not be making a, another video for a little bit unless God instructs me to um, because I'm actually about to go on another journey for uh, myself. Um, so I'm going to step out on faith and trust in God. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of traveling. I just encourage you guys to pray for me um, because a lot of things have been trying to get in my way and hinder in what it is that God has been showing me. Um, so I thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm going to put up the last few questions. All right, you guys. Peace. What provisions have been made for your journey? Are you prepared to rebuild with God? All right, you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until we meet again. All right, you guys. God bless. Peace.